All right, guys. So I want to thank uh, Thomas and Stereo. What a great guy Thomas is. He's got me testing out all sorts of DAX here. I got like, I don't know, 10 grand of DAX here to test. We have two over here and another five here. And I'm really doing A-B testing. Um, they're all pretty good. Some of them will get the boot faster than others. And uh, I'm writing down everything so I could uh, report to Thomas what I think. Lots of fun, just not enough time. Hey guys, it's Thomas here. So I got Tony here. Yeah. And uh, Tony has been on my channel before. I'll link uh, to his video. And the reason why I have Tony here today is because I wanted him to talk about these R2R decks, okay? So a while ago, Tony dropped by my place to install these lights at my place. And then I let him listen to the Galeon amp. And he was shocked because it's the first time he hear air like that, right? Oh, yeah. And for him, he cannot change his amp. Because uh, if you look at his video, he has dedicated amps for his tweeter, his mid-range, and his woofer. So today's video is, a, is the story of how I lend him five DAX, six DAX? Six. Six DAX, okay? Yeah. It's because the next day he called me back and said, hey, Thomas, man, how do I get air in my system? Yeah, that's right? what I was always searching for. Right, it's the, because it's the first time you hear air like this, right? I always right? wanted it. Mm -hmm. And then you made me hear it. Yeah. It was fantastic. So I told him, look, since you can't change amp, the only thing you can do is upgrade your DAC or upgrade your preamp. So that's why I lent him six DACs. Yeah. Six. Okay. Throw it to him and say, okay, go home and listen to it. Now, to keep the video, I'll say, uh, focused, the final comparison will be between the Denifred Venus and the Denifred Pontus. Interestingly, the first email I got from him or message was, the Venus sucks. Okay. The worst one I said it was the worst one out yeah. of all six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't tell him the price, okay? That's the point. Just go listen, and then you tell me which one you like the most. Is the most expensive the best? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got that message. He said, the Venus sucks. I'm like, shoot, that's the most expensive but. one. Yeah, that's a but. Okay. But. So we'll start with Tony. Let's introduce yourself. Tell them, tell the audience, what is your system? First of all, I want to thank you for uh, lending me all these six DACs. Every time I went in mm -hmm. my basement, it was like a candy store. I mean, six <laughs> DACs on my floor, it was, I was the happiest. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for, uh, I really learned a lot about DACs because I, I, I play with my phone all the time. So my system is mostly, mm -hmm. I use phono and... Uh, turntable, well, right? Yeah, the turntable. Yeah. Analog is my mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And DAC was always something, you know, I always had, I had a $400 DAC for many years. And then I bought uh, a Un S8, yeah. which I used for a year. And it was something I didn't, I didn't, I got, you get fed up with DACs, I find these. Okay. Okay. So I called you, you know, you made me hear your system. I wanted that airier sound, you know, yeah, that yeah. my analog doesn't really have, you know, mm -hmm. but analog is super smooth, super realistic. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted something less irritating to my ear. Okay. And uh, you made me try these R2R DACs. Right. So the big question, the R2R DACs, right? As you know, they don't measure as well. And people might think, oh, Delta Sigma DAC measure is better. So therefore, they're better. R2R mm -hmm. is just gimmick, whatever, you know? Oh, no. So as somebody, like, this is your first time listening I, to R2R. I, I knew nothing about DACs. I, I'm a yeah. big, but I learned a lot. Right. So let's start with what is your system? So it's a, a vintage system, mm -hmm. JBL L300s. I'm sure a lot of people know them. Mm -hmm. And it's a Macintosh paired with three. It's an active system. I have mm -hmm. three Macintoshes that drive the drivers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. It's like vintage. You know, mostly. The preamp. But my preamp is uh, is modern. It's a tube. It's a carry SLP05. It has four zero tubes. 03 or 05? I believe it's 05. Is it? Okay. I don't remember. The bigger one is a 7, I believe. Is it? Okay. All right. And uh, I liked it. The preamp is good. It gave, it gave more air than the one I had previously without yep. tubes. Yeah. But I'll never have that air like you have. All right. So let's start with what do you think about R2R DAX? Now that you try all six DAX. They sound analog. Mo most. Not all of them. Not all of them. All right. Well, five of them were R2R. One of them was Delta Sigma. 
Yeah. The Matrix was Delta Sigma. Yeah, and it was not bad. Now. Okay, so what are the DAX that you tried? Let's go one by All one. Right. So I tried the, the flagship from SMSL. The, okay. Uh, VMV the, D3. The, yeah, the VMV D3. Uh, I, I tried the, the Denefraps, um, the Venus 2 and the Pontus 2. Yes, correct. I tried the Matrix Saber X3. Yeah, that's a Delta Sigma DAX. Uh, the latter Schumann. Yes, that's a new deck that I'm about to review mm -hmm. that nobody knows about, I know. but it's amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. And uh, I tried the um, Gustard R26. Yes, that's a new R2R deck from Gustard. Yeah. Uh, Shenzhen Audio sent that to me. and uh, That's a special deck. It's oh, special. Deck. It's actually pretty impressive. Yeah. But all the decks were impressive. None were of them were perfect, did I tell you? Yeah. No, okay. None of them are perfect. <laughs> All right, so I told him not to tell me anything first, right? Because I want to keep it spontaneous. So we didn't discuss nothing in detail before this video. So let's start with R2R DAX or even that matrix. What do you think about DAX now? Uh, they're what? all different. They're all different. I mean, they okay. really are. I hear them. Some, sometimes it takes a while to get accustomed to the sound. Okay. You can't just uh, listen to it for a few minutes and uh, just, uh, like I did to the, uh, uh, to the Venus 2. Right, that's why you I had to more me. fun with the other ones. I put that one in, and uh, mm. and only later. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you the story about that yeah, yeah. later. Yeah, how I got back into it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're all different. Some specialize in highs, lows. Some specialize in lows, and some are faster. All right, so let's let's go really fast, okay? One by one, the Schumann ladder deck. Yeah. What do you like about it, and what you don't like about okay. it? Okay. See, the Schumann is a, uh, it's an all rounder. Okay. It's good for everything, more or less everything, as uh, the Pontus too. Okay. It doesn't really specialize in high. It's an all-rounder. Mm -hmm. So is the, the Matrix, I would say. Okay. The Matrix is a, a bit of an all-rounder. Okay. The latter... Uh, the Gustar? The Gustar, that one is for air. That one is really... Oh, it has more air. Then. Detail, and you'll get all that. Mm -hmm. uh, Apparently, it's a very dynamic uh, deck. I haven't yeah. really spent time with it. My friends it's, told it's, me it's very airy. Details I've never heard like that before. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it doesn't have that. You won't have that connection with the singer like the other ones. Okay, okay. So then you got the uh, the SMSL D3. What yeah. do you think about now, that? I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it was almost like my phono. It made me kind of regret my phono almost. Like it's it's, but like your review, mm -hmm. everything you said is. Uh, Thomas's reviews are really great. Everything he says is really accurate. Okay. And you're, the singer isn't precise. Okay, so it, it's not precise, but right? But it's very, it's like analog. You could listen to it loud. Mm. I listen loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you could listen loud all day long. You won't be irritated. It's like mm -hmm. it's like analog almost. It's really good. It's a good one. And the bass is good on that one. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 it lacks a bit of precision. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Venus 2 had more precision than that one in the mids. All right, so now he has the very S8. Close. Well, not really. They're, they're similar a bit. The, the which one? The, the Venus 2 and the, uh, and the uh, D3, the SMSL D3. Okay, VMD. we'll circle back to that at the right end. So UN S8 is a very good deck. Delta Sigma. <laughs> very anymore. precise, very fast, detail right yeah, it's it's yeah i thought but the ones you all, all the ones you made me uh, you let me now are all better i find unfortunately and the undo is a, is an all-rounder also okay it's good at a bit of everything you know okay but the, after going from the rtr it's hard to go back to the delta sigma i can't i feel like what is the biggest difference between r2r it and sounds delta more sigma? analog the rtr analog as in it how, how you define because i was always going i, I was taking my records mm -hmm. i'm going a b Against your records. Yeah. Sometimes I was having almost trouble if it wasn't for the, the, the pops, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was having almost some trouble. Uh, so you couldn't tell the difference between R2? Well, I, I could, but it's very close. Some songs, oh, like I could tell now which records mm -hmm. came from digital, you know. Okay. They sounded really alike. Okay, okay. Fair enough. So that's overall, in general, that's what you feel, right? When you go from Delta Sigma to R2R, one of the key differences mm -hmm. is that they sound more analog, right? Yeah. There's a certain roundness to it, I guess. Except the Gustard. The Gustard, it's a special one. It's not an all-rounder. Him, it's all detail in the highs. He okay. accelerated. His bass wasn't very detailed. Okay. Yeah, I missed that uh, growl in it, in the bass, the detail. Okay, you have to keep in mind, Tony is 
yeah. crazy for bass, right? Your well, system. Well, I have 15-inch, so if I have to get a dock with good bass, I mean, Russ. Mm. Okay. So I, lo I love the highs in it, but then, you know what I mean? You, yeah, you want that. You, you need that. it. It's got to mm. be good, the detail in the... And they didn't have it, that one, unfortunately. It's too bad it would have been a, maybe a perfect... Well, also the mids on it aren't as good. Okay. So later on, I received another message from uh, Tony. And Tony said that, can I buy the Venus 2? I'm like, huh? From this is the worst <laughs> DAC to can I buy the Venus 2? Yeah. What the hell just happened? And the other DAC you were interested in buying is the ladder DAC, yeah, right? Yeah, the ladder. It's so an all-rounder. It's good the, for everything, that one. Ah. All right. So let's go with what happened. What okay. changed? So I just plugged it in because I always give everything a second chance. I mean... You got to use all this stuff, right? Okay, what do you hate it in the first place? Uh, it sounded like m muddier and more... Uh, it was late night, I, and I couldn't put it too loud. Okay. But then you told me also, push some buttons, you know? So I pushed a few buttons. I'm not familiar with this. I learned a lot, like oversampling and all this. Yeah. I believe I, I removed the oversampling. Okay. So uh, I plugged it back in, and my father-in-law, who's a singer, Johnny Capobianco, Yeah. He, he uh, I, I made him listen to a song by Diana Krall, A Case of You. Okay. Uh, live in Paris. And he's a singer and he loves this kind of music. Oh, your wife and, is a and singer he, too. He heard it. He was really good. Then I made him here. I went to the good start. Listen to this, Johnny. I said, look at the detail in this one. He says, no, no. The other one's way better. And he's not an audio He knows nothing about this. But he's a singer. Yeah. And, oh, and he goes, oh, no, the bottom end. And then I said, because I have always I had bottom end. I always have phono. It's full of this bottom end for me. So it's not something I'm searching. You're always searching for something you don't have, right? Right, right. And then when I heard it, I said, wow, it, it's, it, it's special. Compared the to all end. the other ones. The, the, the mid, the, the voice was so real. Like you could connect. I can, you, you could connect with the singer. Mm -hmm. uh, something you don't... Well, the SMSL, you can. Okay. And like turntable, you can, but sometimes those pops, they, you know, they make you lose concentration and all, you know? I see. Okay. But with the, uh, the Venus, it's something I never felt before. Oh. In the, it's all in the mids. It's, it's got that bottom end. It's, it's a, a meteor sound. The, the mids, I don't know. It's, it's hard. And it's very smooth. It's like silk, that amp, that, that duck, sorry. Yeah. Well, one of, um, okay. Then he's cutting the grass on the other side. So we're going to move down to the back. All right. To, to get less volume okay all right we're back got my neighbor's cutting his grass so we can move to the back here the venus 2 i actually used it for a few months and one thing i noticed when compared to my exosound e28 when i you know when you listen to it you don't really think about it right it's after you change that's where we go mm -hmm. like holy cow yeah compared to my exosound e28 that's bass with the venus 2. oh yeah the, you see the Eris 2 one of my biggest complaints ever was that it has no bass but the Venus 2 has bass. Mm -hmm. So for me, the Venus 2 has been my DAC for a long time. Now, the Venus 2 versus the Pontus 2. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? The Pontus, I, I, didn't, I didn't give it too much. I didn't enjoy it too much, so I put it aside a bit. Okay. I'll be honest. Okay. It didn't do anything. It's an all-rounder. It had good bass. Mm -hmm. good, a bit of good in everything. Okay. It, it's the, the easiest way for me to, the way I remember it. Okay. Don't forget, I had six DACs in about uh, what, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had limited time. Mm -hmm. So that one for me didn't, it didn't really do anything for me. So okay, I would, I, I wouldn't buy that one. Put it this way. So uh, it, it's not, it's it's good in everything. Smooth. Mm -hmm. It's an all rounder. It's good for everything. When we A B tested, it's been a while, by the way. Uh, we noticed that it's a big Venus, difference. Yeah. Big difference eh? in the Venus, the night and day. I find uh -huh. the Venus for for me was smoother. Was more analog, oh yes right oh yes yeah oh it's a bit it's a it, it feel it, it feels expensive i don't know <laughs> the smoothness it's so smooth it's, it's incredible it doesn't sound digital mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they really did a good job on that one yeah now the better than a frips i would like to try too oh the terminator eh? because one thing I, the venus is missing i i find yeah. is air it didn't it didn't have it enough for me. So it didn't have as much as no. the Gastar. No, it, it's like my turntable. Uh, me most, it's, that's how I would compare it to. But you get air with the Gastar. Uh, yeah, if you could put the Gastar, the air of the Gastar in there, mm -hmm. it'd be perfect for me. Who knows? Maybe the Terminator 2 has it. Or maybe the Hollow Mate. 
Hollow yeah. is another art to art that that's really popular. Never heard it before. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, okay. So, you know, Jennifer let me just dock for about six months already. Okay. Seven months. And all I've been using is the Venus 2. Mm -hmm. I'm just, no I just love the fact that it is so smooth. So you know? smooth. Mm -hmm. It's silky smooth. And the yeah. base is really, really good. And you can't really tell that much of a difference between that and your turntable, right? Uh, oh, what, what's your turntable? Should it's I, a Torrens. It, you could see it on the other video I made. Yeah. It's a Torrens. I modified it a bit. You know, I put a mm -hmm. flagship uh, tone arm, Alpha Sin, mm -hmm. uh, with a DynaVector 20X2. Okay. It's a, uh, and uh, the phono is a project two box. There's another two tubes in the two box DS. Okay, so you have a, tube, a low, uh, it's a low output moving coil, the, the Dyna Vector. How, how much is it, by the way? I'm just curious. Everything? Yeah. I would say 5,000, let's say 4,000, 5,000. You even have a custom stand. Yeah, that's why I just that too, is right? a, yeah, the custom plant. Yeah. Yeah. And the Venus and I, too. I, I modified, dampened all the uh the components inside. Yeah. Yeah. He did a lot of work on it, eh? Yeah. He's crazy about turntables. Yeah. The it, it, all these art towards they may uh make you regret buying a turntable, honestly. Really? But no, because I enjoy going and buy uh, records with my wife it gives you something to do like if you're bored mm -hmm. how about we go record shopping go for out go for a walk it gets you out of the house mm -hmm. it's fun you know okay but uh, and it makes you just listen to music you never would listen to before you mean you would listen to the whole album that too yeah it, it, it's it's okay. nice too i see i'll never get rid of it <laughs> All right, but, but I don't. I don't think I would modify it any further. Like it's, it's good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another thing I learned about Dax Thomas is I learned w what it is to uh, these expensive ones. What it and all they're trying to do is become analog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I figured it would be like more detail or smoother, but it's like ex they're trying to copy exactly analog. Okay, so that's when you notice. Is yeah. the Matrix? That's a Delta Sigma deck. Mm -hmm. That's a three thousand five hundred dollar deck. Did it sound analog? More analog than my own, that's for sure. Than your own, right? Yeah. So oh, yes. You do see a difference in performance between a thousand dollar deck and a yes. three thousand dollar deck, right? Yes. But that one has a lot of other features too, eh? Got a streamer and streamer. Stuff. So you're paying for that too. The Dynafrips is just a deck, mm -hmm. and you can hear it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what can the Denifrip do besides sounding analog that your own essay cannot do? Mm. Like in, in the my connection system, with the, the, the singer okay. uh, and the, the bottom, it's the bottom end. The own really doesn't sound uh, analog at all, if you ask me, at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's one reason why I bought it. Mm -hmm. Because I, it I wanted different. like a dynamic, crazier sound, you know, mm -hmm. people, it's something people are used to, you know. People are used to this digital sound anyway. Every car is digital, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted in the first place. I didn't want this super smooth. I had my turntable anyway. Right. But now that I uh, hear these other ones, it's like, why am I listening to this? You know, I could be listening to quality, smooth music all the time. But Somebody brought up a good point, an uh, audio buddy of mine. And he said that R2R our deck, he find it slow. The pacing is a little bit slow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's true. Is it? Yeah. So, yeah. And for that, and it's something that's not mentioned. It's okay. We'll just. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I think that's it. I, I think I, I just want to get his critique on what he felt about R2R our DAX. You won't go back. It's hard to go back to the Sigma. I don't know how. I don't know, man. It's ka ching ka ching, man. It's expensive though. That that that's the problem, right? Once you hear better gear, yeah. that's when you go like, oh, it's hard to go back, right? But until you hear it, you think that a five hundred a five hundred dollar yeah. topping deck is good enough. It measures the hell super good, clean, clear. But once you listen to a high end R two R deck, that's when you notice. You see, R two R deck. When I listen to it, you can feel the space around the instrument in my setup, right? Keep in mind I have a tube setup, so you're not only having instruments separated. You can feel the air around the instrument because keep in mind, I have a tube, like really tube setup. So that distinguish a lot for me, like between the cheap DAX and the higher end DAX, not to mention the, the fact mm -hmm. that 
there's a certain roundness to the it. Roundness. So it sounds sounds more analog, right? Mm -hmm. It's not as aggressive. Yeah. It's not. There's no hard edges, mm -hmm. right? That's the key. And that's why I wanted to. Uh, why I got fed up on my own S8. Ah. It was too. It it just. I don't know. It gives you like. It irritates your ears after a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Matrix mm -hmm. could irritate you too. Mm -hmm. uh, at loud, because I play loud sometimes. Oh, if I'm playing. testing a, a DAC, I'm gonna play it at, at high levels also. Mm -hmm. And the Matrix could give you like the you, pierce your ears. It, it could really do that. Yeah, I played some like electronic. I don't know what I played. But you're playing at 100 dB though, right? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, the neighbors yes. can hear you. Like, I mean, sometimes, the neighbor, neighbor, yeah. right? So it's important to really, if you want to really hear it, to play at different volumes you know okay to see how your ear is going to react to it it's not the same mm -hmm. with the with the venus 2 you can play it loud all day long ah. there's no and also the the d3 the vmv d3 yeah the one that everybody says crap yeah right every I, you see what happened yeah. but nobody could afford that one eh? <laughs> no nobody it's, nobody has heard it but everybody says yeah. crap right so what happens that after i lend him the smsl d3 you went online and you look for people's opinion on it right so, yeah but no one heard it yeah no one heard it but everybody says crap yeah now you're one of the few people have got a chance to hear it like but the point is that you heard it and you know that it's actually pretty decent yes. oh right? yes Oh yeah. yes, I was doing A/B testing with my turntable, and it's very close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very close. All right, that's good. So, uh, short video today. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys next time.